Okay, problem 716 in our book. We've talked about it a little bit already, but you can see if you cut the structure at C, and again look at the left or the right side, uh, there's no clear advantage. Again, the left side of the load is trapezoidal, the right side is trapezoidal, no, no difference there, no simplicity there. Uh, you have a pin on the left side, uh, roller on the right side. So technically, there's less work to do on the right side. So that's what I'll do. So let's begin. We're going to have to find the reaction over there at B. So I'll draw a free body diagram of the whole structure. And I'll assume a reaction BY and at the, P, the pin AY and AX. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw the uh, shape of the trapezoid so we can get some uh, values. Now, although I remember the area of under a trapezoid, and you probably do too, I don't remember where the centroid is off the top of my head. So what I usually do and it's probably fair to do, is to break it up into a rectangle and a triangle. So my rectangular piece here uh, has an intensity of 200 newtons per meter. And what would be the height of the triangle right there? What would be 400 minus 200? Do you see that? So that little section is also 200 newtons per meter. So I'm going to have two forces. I'll have a force due to the rectangle, which is 200 times uh, 6. So that's what? 1,200 1, newtons. And then I'll have another force due to the triangular piece. And that's one half base times height. So that should be 600. Did I do that right? Now the distances uh, would be, I'm going to sum moments about A, so this distance would be 3 meters. And what's the distance to this force? Well, from A, it's going to be two-thirds the distance, and two-thirds of six is four meters. See that? A little clumsy. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. So now I just some moments about A. We've done that just a few times this semester. Make sure it's in equilibrium. So both my applied forces are going to create negative moment. So the first one will be 1,200 newtons. Wouldn't it be 5 meters instead of 4 meters? Uh, why 5 meters? Because we're one third from the top of the triangle over. And that's well, what's, what's one third of 6? It's basically 1, but if you're going from A, it would be 3 meters plus 2. No, no, no. The triangle goes the whole six meters, right? Okay. See that? Yeah. Okay, so my 1,200 will have a three-meter moment arm. And then the 600 Newton will have the four-meter. And then BY at the end will have six meters. So I should be able to find BY. Uh, 800? I'm guessing. What did you guys get? Nobody? Oh, a thousand. <laughs> 
Does that sound right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're going to cut it at C and work the left hand side. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram for that. There's a chunk of the beam. There's my BY reaction, which I now know is a thousand. Uh, the length is three meters. Now, what is the intensity of the loading right here at C? It's right in the middle. So if you start off at 200 and you linearly vary to 400, what should the value be in the middle? 300. And it goes to intensity of 400. So again, this little segment that we're looking at is trapezoidal. I'm going to follow my same strategy. I'm going to break it up into two. So now this is this 400 is the total height. Let's see if I can... What's the height of just this little part of the structure? It would be 100. And then what would be the height of the rectangle? It's 300. So with that information, I can come back and find the concentrated equivalent for the rectangular section, which would be 300 newtons per meters times 3, or 900 newtons. And I can find the equivalent force for my triangular piece, which is 100 times 3 divided by 2, which is, should be 150 newtons. And those distances from the cut, this would be half the distance, or 1.5 meters. Didn't leave myself much room to draw. So what's the centroid of that triangle, Mr. Woods? Or uh, this one's going to be two. Two. Right, two-thirds of three? Now let's not forget that I, at my cut surface, I have my normal. Uh, sorry, I have my normal force. I have my shear force. I have my bending moment, all positive. So again pretty uh, crowded free body diagram, but from that I should be able to uh, find my internal forces. So again, it's probably a good thing to start by summing moments at the cut. In this case, it's point C, making sure things are in equilibrium. So with right hand rules, my moment sign convention, my internal moment here, MC, is actually negative. And then I have both these forces the concentrated equivalent forces are creating negative moment. So I have minus 900 newtons times a moment arm of 1.5 meters, minus 150 newton times a moment arm of 2 meters, and then my reaction BY, which is positive, which is 1,000 newtons times a moment arm of 3 meters. So what is the moment at C? Let's see. I got thirteen fifty positive. Do you guys get that? Anybody get that? That should be newton meters.
You see, sir, heard you tapping away. Did you get the same number? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right, so we can sum forces in the y direction to get the shear. So I have the shear force acting up. I got a bunch of forces acting down here. So I got 900 newtons from the normal force or the concentrated equivalent force, sorry. 150 from that triangular section and then my reaction of 1,000. So that looks like the shear at C is going to be 50. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's going to be positive. <coughs> the last equation is kind of a anticlimactic, some forces in the x direction, and all I have is my normal force. So it looks like my normal force is zero. It's not uncommon for beams, especially, that the axial force is zero. Remember, beams are usually designed to handle perpendicular loads. So there's really not any requirement for a reaction in the x direction. So any questions about that one? That one seems a little more doable than the other one. So I'll stop here.